Above all things, my daughter, strive when your meditation is ended to retain the thoughts and resolutions you have made as your earnest practice throughout the day. This is the real fruit of meditation, without which it is apt to be unprofitable, if not actually harmful, inasmuch as to dwell upon virtues without practicing them lends to puff us up with unrealities until we begin to fancy ourselves all that we have meditated upon and resolved to be, which is all very well if our resolutions are earnest and substantial, but on the contrary hollow and dangerous if they are not put into practice. You must then diligently endeavor to carry out your resolutions and seek for all opportunities great and small. For instance, if your resolution was to win over those who oppose you by gentleness, seek throughout the day any occasion of meeting such persons kindly, and if none offers, strive to speak well of them and pray for them. When you leave off this interior prayer, you must be careful to keep your heart in an even balance, lest the balm it has received in meditation be scattered. I mean, try to maintain silence for some brief space, and let your thoughts be transferred gradually from devotion to business, keeping alive the feelings and affections aroused in meditation as long as possible. Supposing someone to have received a precious porcelain vessel filled with the most costly liquid which he is going to carry home, how carefully he would go, not looking about, but watching steadfastly lest he trip or stumble, or lest he spill any of the contents of his vessel. Just so, after meditation, do not allow yourself forthwith to be distracted, but look straight before you. Of course, if you meet any one to whom you are bound to attend, you must act according to the circumstance in which you find yourself. But even thus, give heed to your heart, so as to lose as little as possible of the precious fruits of your meditation. You should strive, too, to accustom yourself to go easily from prayer to all such occupations as your calling or position lawfully require of you, even although such occupations may seem uncongenial to the affections and thoughts just before forming the part of your prayer. Thus, the lawyer should be able to go from meditation to his pleading, the tradesman to his business, the mistress of a family to the cares of her household and her wifely duties, so calmly and gently as to not be in any way disturbed by so doing. In both, you are fulfilling God's will, and you should be able to turn from one to the other in a devout and humble spirit. It may be that sometimes, immediately after your preparation, your affections will be wholly drawn to God, and then, my child, you must let go the reins, and do not attempt to follow any given method, since, although as a general rule your considerations should precede your affections and resolutions, when the Holy Spirit gives you those affections at once, it is unnecessary to use the machinery which was intended to bring about the same result. In short, whenever such affections are kindled in your heart, accept them, and give them place and preference to all other considerations. The only object in placing the affections after the points of consideration in meditation is to make the different parts of meditation clearer. For it is a general rule that when affections arise, they are never to be checked, but always encouraged to flow freely. And this applies also to acts of thanksgiving, of oblation, and petition, which must not be restrained either, although it is well to repeat or renew them at the close of your meditation. But your resolutions must be made after the affections, and quite at the end of your meditation, and that all the more because in these you must enter upon ordinary, familiar subjects and things which would be liable to cause distractions if they were intruded among your spiritual affections. Amid your affections and resolutions, it is well occasionally to make use of colloquies, and to speak sometimes to your Lord, sometimes to your guardian angel, or to those persons who are concerned in the mystery you are meditating, to the saints, to yourself, your own heart, to sinners, and even to the inanimate creation around you, as David so often did in the Psalms, as well as other saints in their prayers and meditations.